channel. My name is Anayati and today I'm going to talk about the main components, their function and working principles of a typical cooling system. The main components of a very simple cooling system that the coolant flows through them our water pump, thermostat, radiator, and the expansion and retraction valves. Of course, cooling fan, hoses, pipes, and passes in the engine block and cylinder head are part of this simple cooling system. The water pump is the heart of the system and mainly works by timing belt or chain. This ensures that every time that the engine starts, water pump starts to turn too. The water pump that is used on cars are mainly centrifugal, vein impeller type and in this type of pump when the input shaft rotates by the pulley, the impeller that is installed on that rotates too and its rotation sucks the coolant from inlet passage and throws outward by centrifugal force and the charged coolant goes out of the water pump housing from the outlet passage into the engine block. Dry side of the water pump is isolated from wet side by at least one special sliding seal and bearing that use a very very light flow of coolant as the lubricant. As I said when the coolant leaves the water pump it is forced into the engine block and flows through the water jacket surrounding cylinders and absorbs some heat energy and then flows up into the few passages that the size of them are engineered based on coolant velocity, flow rate and desired coolant profile. These galleries are routed to cylinder head to cool exhaust valves and passages that are hottest parts of an engine. The primary reason that the coolant first flows into the engine block and then to the cylinder head is higher temperature of the cylinder head and to prevent thermal shock of that when cool coolant comes into the engine. Also, this arrangement helps the coolant to flow more easily based on principles of natural convection that states that the fluids tend to flow upward as their density is affected by increasing temperature and this principle in cooling systems are known as thermosiphon effect. At the outlet of the cylinder head coolant meets a gate known as thermostat. As you know thermostat is a device that can be pre-adjusted to open a passage when its temperature reaches to a certain point. Mechanical old style thermostats use a wax pellet element inside a copper cup that interacts with the pliable diaphragm that is in contact with the piston and the piston moves a valve that is forced into its seat by a spring and it blocks the housing passage to the radiator. When the coolant is cold, as I said, a spring forces the valve in closed position, so coolant passage to the radiator is closed and the coolant has to go into a bypass passage to circulate in the engine by the force of water pump and this bypass action and coolant flowing prevents forming of hot spots when the coolant is still cold and thermostat is closed. Then by raise of engine and coolant temperature, wax starts to liquefy at a certain pre-adjusted temperature. This way it expands and pushes on the diaphragm that acts on the piston to move the valve and at the specific temperature the valve would be in fully open position and coolant can flow almost freely to the radiator. Radiator in simple words is a heat exchanger that receives hot coolant from the top, guides it into tubes that have heat dissipating fins for better transfer of heat to passing air and at the bottom there's a small tank to ensure that always there's enough coolant to be delivered to the water pump. Now, despite of the circulation, if temperature of the coolant goes over a specific temperature, an ECU that is usually ECM or PCM activates the fan or fans to boost cooling of the radiator and the coolant that is flowing inside that. Also, majority of cars have a heat exchanger that is known to be a part of air conditioning system and this heat exchanger receives directly a portion of the coolant that comes out of the engine to heat up the interior in cold weather conditions. Even though this heat exchanger is not technically accounted as a part of the cooling system in the summer, but the fact is that it can be very effective to reduce coolant temperature in engine overheating conditions. Now I come to ready to cap. As I said, we need to build up pressure in a cooling system to increase boiling temperature of the coolant. On the other hand, as the engine works, the temperature of the coolant goes up and when the thermostat opens at the effect of higher temperatures, the coolant flows into the whole system. Now there are some technical issues. 
issues. First, we need an accessible opening on the cooling system to fill that with the coolant and then cap it again. This opening is usually on the radiator top section and over that there is a device known as radiator cap. Second, when the temperature of the coolant goes up, it expands and builds up pressure in the system. But the system needs a provision to release the pressure if it goes over a per-adjusted value. This provision can be a spring type pressure valve in the radiator cap to release the pressure out of the system and prevent severe damage to the fittings and components. Now, when the engine turns off, the coolant cools down and it retracts to a smaller volume. In this case, there is another spring type pressure valve on the radiator cap that opens at the effect of negative pressure of the system and allows coolant or air to return to the radiator and prevent collapse of the components. So you can understand importance of a proper and sound radiator cap. At the output side of the radiator cap, there's an overflow tank that reserves the space for expansion and retraction of the coolant. In some designs, engineers use a radiator without any cap and make that overflow tank pressurized by using that special cap on that. This tank that is also known as surge tank should be filled to a specific volume. So when the coolant expands and retracts, only air exists and returns to the system. Well, these were the main components of a very simple conventional cooling system and their working principles. But cooling system that is used on your car can vary from this in configuration and components. For example, location of the water pump and structure of the radiator can deviate from these that I have shown and presented to you. Also, on some cars that the engine and powertrain are installed in longitudinal direction, engineers use a viscous coupling that uses a liquid or wax inside that to derive the cooling fan. These couplings usually are coupled directly to the engine crankshaft on one side and the temperature of the coolant indirectly regulates the coupling and fan speed. But the cooling systems that are used on modern cars of today can be more different and more complicated. For example, water pump can be an electric type or thermostat can be replaced by an electric valve that is controlled by the engine ECU to regulate the passage according to the signals that two or a few coolant temperature sensors send to that ECU. Also, on some high-performance cars, using turbochargers and boosted air supply systems demand for air intercoolers to cool the charged air to increase volume efficiency and better performance of the engine on their loads. Some designs use air cooling for these intercoolers, but actually more effective way is using water-based cooling systems. The point here is that the range of temperature for these intercoolers are very lower than a typical engine cooling system. So optimal way is to have a separate cooling circuit from engine cooling system for intercoolers and usually an electric water pump circulates the coolant in that. Also, deployment of torque converters in automatic transmissions to transfer the torque raises the temperature of the automatic transmission fluid or ATF. So they use a cooler on the transmission or in front or in parallel position of the radiator or even as an integrated part of that to cool the ATF. Even for high performance engines that use a lot of fuel in high load conditions and produce a lot of heat, maybe use of the cooling system alone won't remove excess heat from engine oil and best practice would be to use a separate cooling path for the engine oil to keep temperature of that within the acceptable range. Also designers use the heated coolant for some other applications like heating the throttle valve for better operation in very lower temperatures or save the energy in the coolant to heat the interior even many minutes after turning the engine off. In fact, how much we can deploy the heat energy that is reserved in the coolant, we have increased efficiency of the engine and the whole powertrain. On the other hand, just after starting the engine and when it is cold, it's very important to increase temperature of the coolant fastly to the normal operating temperature to increase fuel efficiency and controlling emissions of that engine. You can understand this importance when you know that the engines wear out four times faster if they work in lower temperatures continually. To achieve this goal, designers can use heat energy of the exhaust gas in a special heat exchanger to heat the coolant or block fill of cool ambient air passing over the engine using electronically controlled grill shutters that are mainly used for improving aerodynamics of the car. These advanced technologies are more significant in modern cars of today that are classified as ultra low to conceptually zero emission vehicles that are mainly hybrid and electric type cars. Here question is that is there any cooling system used on electric cars? 
the answer is yes. Scientifically, you cannot make a machine that is 100% efficient and this inefficiency usually appears in the machine in the form of heat energy. This excess heat can be detrimental to the electric motor and the battery if not be taken away properly. So even electric cars have cooling systems. I talk about electric powertrains and details of these low temperature cooling systems in different videos in the future. If I want to talk more about future and advanced technologies of the cooling systems in this video, I just can say that there are two main fields for consideration. One of them is development of cooling system components like use of super efficient variable speed electric water pumps that provide variable coolant flow in different temperatures to optimize cooling and they can be boosted by an impeller that is actuated by the force of air on a moving vehicle. Or use of a special tubing for radiators that can make the turbulence in the flow of the coolant and this way increasing rate of heat transfer and better cooling. Another field for development in the future would be thermal management technologies. When an engine is working in normal operating temperature, combustion of mixture of fuel and air and flow of hot exhaust gas and cool intake air imposes very different operating conditions for pistons, valves, engine block, cylinder head and cylinder head gasket that is interface of engine block and cylinder head. In conventional cooling systems, there's only one water pump, one or two coolant temperature sensors and coolant passage that always have engine block on upstream and cylinder head on downstream. Easily you can understand that these systems have major limitations in keeping temperature of different engine components within optimum operating range. But advanced thermal management technologies can take many technical issues under consideration. These issues are temperature of the cylinder walls for optimum temperature of lubricant and oil film thickness, temperature of combustion chamber for optimum fuel optimization and not control, temperature of cylinder head to protect the exhaust valves while maintaining temperature of intake air within lower acceptable range for better volumetric efficiency and considering characteristics of cylinder head gasket that is at the effect of different engine components and fluids, especially after engine of conditions in high temperatures and the resulted heat soak. I hope that this video was useful and informative for you and worth the precious time that you spent for watching that. Please subscribe to my channel if you like and press the bell icon to be notified if I have a new video on my channel. Bye!